know it's party time. Party time. Party time, Mom. Welcome to another episode of the Chad Pray the Show here in the Mothership, which is Studio 22. Puppet Master, look at me. Just look at me. I'm all slouched down and chilling. Unbelievable. I'm just, I'm just down here for the ride, man. <laughs> it's Wednesday. It's hump day. Chump day. Yeah. Nobody in the room that we know of has coronavirus. Thank God. Thank God. The quickest way to get tested for coronavirus is touch a rich person's face and they'll be right on you. They'll just they'll <laughs> check you out because only rich people get this thing, it seems, these <laughs> days. Uh, Candice is the queen of the Ethiopians. We're going to talk to you today about a couple of different things. I know you love being put on the spot. We talked to Herbert the Silent Deer, but he is, alas, silent. Party Foul Steve at the Party Foul Pub with the only cure for all germs right behind him. Look at that. Look at that hooch. Look at that booze. <laughs> Oh, and of course, hot news, Natalie hanging out. She's back. She's nasally, and I we are nasally. socially distanced. A socially distanced. See, we can't even touch each other. There you go. Yep. Y'all's feet are close. No, they're it's not. Like two feet away. I don't no, think no, no, you no. can catch it from feet. You catch other things from feet. Yeah. Just disgusting. <laughs> um, hope everybody's not touching their face. They haven't gone too stir crazy. They're having a good time at home. Um, we're going to get into some of the wilder topics of the day and boy, people get pissed off on social media and it is never more true than right now while everybody's bored at home and looking for something to be offended by. Everybody's on eggshells. Mm -hmm. Everybody's on pins and needles. Everybody's just looking thin-skinned at something to comment on that they disagree with. Here's a message I got just yesterday. Chad, I'm really disappointed that you're spreading things such as this over positive encouragement to your followers. I think you're a great funny guy, but lately your posts and the hand over the face emoji. You should not be touching your face, even with emojis, okay? <laughs> Don't do it. Don't get the emoji COVID. Oh, gosh. The wet markets are open again in China. In China. I love China. <laughs> I've the been what to China. markets? I've been to China many times. The wet? Did you say the wet? wet markets. Wet? Dogs, cats, rats, bats, other animals that we've never even heard of. They're selling them in these markets, putting them in the stew, and they're eating them. Now. I'm not saying that because I truly believe the Wuhan virus came from bat soup. I'm saying it because you people have been nasty for 5,000 years. And you're still doing it. <laughs> Steve and I went yesterday and had some Thai food. They wouldn't let us eat in the restaurant, though. Nope. They, they made kept, us take it out. They kept eyeballing us and making sure we stayed away from them. Yeah, they, they, they were like, just that sit foot. You stay sit foot over that. They did that to y'all before this outbreak, though. They did. <laughs> yeah. They never want to come to our table at the Happy Thai. We so got I, it to go. I, I love that restaurant, though. I do too, man. It's good food, and uh, it was great. I, I don't, you know, people have this idea that if you eat this stuff from Asian restaurants, you're going to get the COVID. Well, they're morons. Well, they are. Yeah, that's dumb. It's, it's a virus. Virus from China. It's a giant yeah. virus. It's a disease, too, isn't it? You know Is what bugs a... me about Trump when he talks? He looks at his bottom teeth. Does I he have wish an I underbite? could do a Trump voice. What? He has an underbite? China. I saw your Instagram story. China. You did do a Trump voice. You did pretty good. Well, I can not I can do some words, but that's about it. That's about Vagina. it. Vagina. I'm hyped up today. I'm excited to be here. And you know why I'm hyped up? Because I've been drinking my caffeine. America's leading veteran owned and operated coffee company, my boys, Black Rifle Coffee Company, BRCC. They're launching a coffee donation campaign to support medical and emergency workers. That's right. Quarantine military personnel and their families and others working around the clock to mitigate the national and global impact of COVID-19. For every coffee purchase on blackriflecoffee.com during a 10-day period black rifle will donate a bag of coffee or a can of its newly released ready to drink coffee to medical personnel 
first responders and service members to participate in the buy a bag, give a bag initiative. Visit BlackRifleCoffee.com. Purchase any bag of BRCC's premium roast coffee. Their company is committed to supporting veteran law enforcement and first responder causes. And the best way to enjoy Black Rifle Coffee Company Coffee is through the Coffee Club. I'm a member. You need to be a member. A free subscription where your chosen coffee, roasted, packaged, shipped free to your door on your schedule, in addition to the convenience, you're going to receive special discounted pricing and gain access to exclusive products, member-only content, partner discounts, more, 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 like, for instance, Matt Best, uh, his new music video, which is killing it, called Quarantine. Very funny. Look it up on YouTube. You can purchase at BlackRifleCoffee.com slash WatchChad. Use promo code WatchChad, and guess what you'll get? 20% off your first purchase. Go to BlackRifleCoffee.com. Here we go. Hey, what I want you to do is go to where music is offered. Get He's Still Your President. Uh, get it at iTunes, Amazon Music. I got on Amazon Music this week, downloaded the app. You know, I'm an iTunes guy because it's simple, it's easy. Is that a bad thing, DC? Is iTunes a horrible thing? No, I love iTunes. It's it, the Amazon Music that I'm curious well, to see your here's opinion why. on. Mm -hmm. Here's why. There are certain things that you can only buy on Amazon Music, like, for instance, Garth Brooks. Garth Brooks has never been on iTunes. The Tiger King. He has his audio CD only that's, on That's true. Amazon. <laughs> the Milli Vanilli of White Trash. I had someone send me a message excoriating me. It was a 1,000-word monologue. Wow. On the separation of redneck and hillbilly. I have been misdiagnosing Joe Exotic by calling him a redneck. He's a hillbilly. But he's not. He's not. I push back. What? What's the differentiating factor? Is it the pyrotechnics? or? Uh, I stopped reading after 100 words. Uh, the pyrotechnics. It's either the pyrotechnics or the leather jackets. <laughs> That distinguish uh, it. Well, you have the delineations of white trash and under white trash. If, I, if I'm drawing like a pyramid, white trash, and then you have hillbilly and you have redneck and you have inbred. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yes. They exist. They exist. Don't go across the street when you can go across the hall. Mm. Ugh, we're bumping cousins. And I'm just telling you, Joe Exotic is not a hillbilly. You know why? There's no hills. Oh, that's true. There's no hills. Hillbillies are people who live in the hills. Oh, okay. They're in the hollers in the hills. Mm -hmm. Most of you don't even know what a holler is. Yeah. What? Does it also break up depending on the regions in America? Mm-hmm. Like Mississippi, River, East Texas, right? Appalachian oh. Trail sort of area. Yeah. Uh, Steve, we've been there. Yes, we have. We have been there. We have seen it. And I will say this: redneck is everywhere, all around the globe, all around the globe. Hillbilly is not. Hillbilly is like bourbon. It has to be made in America. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it has yeah. to be in a certain region of America. Okay? So I don't consider anyone in Texas or Oklahoma or anything like that to be a hillbilly. They're not hillbillies. They're rednecks. Right? And I know. I've told you. I told you. I got a cousin that got arrested at a cockfight for selling chicken salad sandwiches. Listen. If you ain't got an uncle that took his daughter to the strip club for a job, mm. <laughs> you mm. know what I'm talking about. A little bit. You kind of people got mad at you yesterday, or or Monday on the podcast. Yeah. Did you know that? I didn't know that. You know why? Why? Because you made fun of Conroe. 
Actually, we I, made, of, I made, he fun, made of, fun of Conroe, I made fun but of you Conroe. brought it up because you're from Conroe. What I, what I, I don't even remember what I said. I don't remember what anybody what said. I don't even remember what it said. It, you said something funny. I said, yeah, like Conroe, Texas. And then, don't you make fun of Conroe, you son of a Bill Billy. Oh, and they got mad at me? No, no they, they didn't really get mad at you. No, nobody I, got well, mad, but they were just Don't funny. talk about Conroe. Let me tell you something. I'm a big Conroe fan. Oh, you are. I grew up there. I gra- graduated from there, and I love going back. Mm. That's a great place. Plus, that, and you mentioned East Texas earlier, it's towns like that that are keeping us red. Mm-hmm. And that's why I'm a big fan. They're a lot smarter <laughs> than these big cities. <laughs> well, you know what? Our big cities went I, blue. And I, Exactly. And I can talk about them because I is one. I too. Right, that's so me. I'm, I East, I'm deep East Texas. I can talk about Conroe. I live, grew up close enough to it. I'm rocking a Stephen F. Austin State University sweatshirt right now because that's where I graduated from. Nacogdoches. East Texas Ivy League, baby. I lo- Ivy League of East Texas. Aren't they and I love it. Or what are they? Lumberjacks. Yeah, lumberjacks. That's Come what on. I thought. Yeah. Essential hey, business. Uh, you know, and as a redneck, we think that we can use duct tape for anything. We can. We can't. What? Try wiping your ass with it. No, I did it. Just flip it. <laughs> it's a little slick. <laughs> it's fine. It gets a little slick. Well, you pat it with the sticky side. Oh, my Lord. You don't Lord. know how to do it. Oh, my Lord. See, these are dumb ideas. <laughs> these are dumb ideas. And speaking of a dumb idea, there's a dude... Uh, this past Sunday, Washington State, which Washington State has the largest percentage of corona outbreaks, the largest percentage per capita, mm. right? They don't have the n- most cases, but they have the largest percentage. They're like, like have a four and a half percent death rate of people who get it. Okay, um, that's that's pretty big, actually. But a guy in Washington State, he took the police on a chase on Sunday and when they finally stopped him or he finally stopped he said he was teaching his dog how to drive the dog was in the driver's seat and they pulled over the, the guy was 51 years old he's going 100 miles an hour crashed into several cars along the way what kind of drugs you gotta be I, on what kind of dog was this he was teaching a some smart dogs are smart. smarter than others <laughs> it, was a, it was a smart one <laughs> He's up there smoking <laughs> pots, you know, and that's how they're. That's why the coronavirus is spreading so fast. They're passing blunts, you know. Uh, yeah, everybody's yeah. touching yeah. each other's lips. Yeah. Uh, don't share the same pipe right now, people. I wonder. It, corona lives in the bong water. Don't suck it. Mm. I mm. wonder, and there's got to be more to this story. And I'm sure some of you out there, this is your redneck cousin, and you'll call me up, and you'll send me a message, and you'll be like, you just don't understand what was going on. He works for the circus, and that's his job, to train dogs. Well, put them out on an open field somewhere, okay? Hmm. And don't go 100 miles an hour. I'm sure there's something. Did they uh, ticket the dog, or what? <laughs> <laughs> well, apparently he was driving without a license. Oh. Uh, I'll tell you. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, that's that's facts. I'll tell you. I you know how Trump came out the other day and he basically said that he thinks that hospital workers have been stealing masks, have been going out the back door. And Andrew Cuomo, the governor of New York, was like, Oh, how dare he say that? You know, you can't say stuff like that. Well, that was on March oh what, the twenty ninth, something like that. And, uh, you know, there was articles out there talking about the president offered no evidence to back his suggestion of something so nefarious. Well, if you go all the way back, this why this is why I post, this is why we post Blaze articles out there. And people go, I don't want to see that stuff. Well, because then stay ignorant. You keep your head in the sand, okay? Mm-hmm. But on March the 5th, Andrew Cuomo said people are stealing masks and other medical equipment from hospitals. Mark, I'm telling you, Mark. Unbelievable. White trash. Mm -hmm. Did you see the picture of Andrew Cuomo that came out Monday? He's giving his press conference. He's wearing his little, he's he's got that little uh, seal on his shirt. He's trying to look presidential, right? Mm. And he's wearing the golf polo, 
And people can't see it. People can't see it. But there's this picture right here. And if you'll notice, there's something really weird going on with his nipples. Oh, he's got oh, a... Have you seen this picture? You need to look it up. The man has nipple piercings. He's got studs through his nipples. Or he has six nipples. No, he's got studs. I've seen another picture blown up. Can I see that? The man and has that's studs. That's not Photoshop. That's like for No, real. that's real. It's in several places. Oh. The man, Andrew Cuomo, he got freak nipples. He's got freak nipples. Don't scroll too far, Nat. I won't. You'll get an education. Right? The uh, I'm telling you. <clears throat> my nipples are too small for that. Oh, I think it gets something through there. Yeah, no, I guarantee can't. you Andrew Cuomo has a Prince Albert. <gasps> I wonder if Prince Albert has an Andrew Cuomo. <laughs> <laughs> Tiger King had a Prince Albert. He did have a Prince Albert. Yeah. A padlock. Yeah. I don't know how all that works. I don't either. I don't, I don't know what possesses a person to say, you know what? Let's just drive that needle right through here. Pierce it. <laughs> anyway, Andrew Cuomo, freak, freak show. He's a freak show. Uh, let me let me give you some numbers, people. Let me give you some numbers, and these numbers are a, a, little, a little bit older. Um, we're at about uh, the reported. If you go January one to March twenty fifth, you had about twenty one thousand deaths by coronavirus. Had 113,000 by the seasonal flu, 228,000 by malaria, 250,000 by suicide, 313,000 traffic fatalities, 390,000 deaths by HIV and AIDS, Mm -hmm. 581,000 deaths by alcohol, 1,162,000 by smoking, 1,900,000 by cancer, 2.3 million, almost 2.4 by hunger, and 9,900,000 deaths by abortion. Mm. Mm. What is the real epidemic slash pandemic, Puppet Master? Oh, yeah. See, we're focusing on some things that are just not good. Anyway, those are the things going on. So I brought all that stuff up because there was a Brooklyn man who's arrested for hoarding masks and coughing on FBI agents. He claimed to be infected with the coronavirus, coughed on FBI agents who were investigating him for hoarding medical supplies. Uh, That's just mean. Uh, He was selling them. He was price price gouging. He's suspected of selling a New Jersey doctor about 1,000 of the masks for $12,000. I told you we need to start bottling that snake oil, Steve. Yeah, no kidding. uh, Those masks take 88 cents to make. That's what they used to selling for mm-hmm. and look at them they're getting six seven dollars or more mm-hmm. for them now i guess up to 12 yeah so that's he 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 directed another doctor to an and those models will be here Jersey. tomorrow they're huh. it's prime they're amazon prime what do you got <laughs> those bottles <laughs> <laughs> oh we're gonna fill it up with uh, olive oil Vix and- 44 yeah. We put a little vapo rub in there. Hey, that is my mother's cure for everything. Absolutely. But, oh, we got to rub it down with Vicks. You got to put some Vicks mm-hmm. on the bottom of your yeah. feet. Yeah. That's a cure all, man. That or spray it with Windex. But anyway, That's yeah, he bites. sent one guy to an auto repair shop to pick up an order. Uh, he, got, he said he'd got enough medical supplies to outfit an entire hospital. Mm-hmm. Hand sanitizer, Clorox wipe, chemical cleaning agents, surgical supplies. It's crazy, man. And I'll tell you what. Now, did he already have all that stuff before this started going down, or did he go get it right at... Don't know. Don't know. Mm. That's that's your homework assignment. Might be. Find out. He could have been working at a hospital and been stealing for 20 years. Could have been. Uh, You never know. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, TLC. Remember when TLC stood for the Learning Channel? Yes. That's long gone. That's long gone. Um, the show that I'm going to be on after this pandemic is over and quarantine, my 600 pound life, yeah. um, they're going to put a little halt to that. Um, obviously their cast members are high risk. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. Oh, they allergies. have that one doctor out of Houston. Is it, is that, is that the one that's filmed in Houston? I don't know. I think he it's puts Texas, them- Florida and Mississippi. Yeah. Okay, the one I mean, in they're Houston, all over, I've but right now few. it's Texas, Florida, yeah. Mississippi. Uh, but 
Yeah, I mean, they already have a compromised immune system, so they're they're not going to keep doing the deal. I've seen the meme about the show. Right. Have you seen that? So after this... Yeah, that's. I, do the producers call me? Do the producers call me? Do I call them? And now yeah. they're halting it. Interesting. Yeah, they're, they're ha- halting it. You're welcome. So, anyway, so nobody crazy. gets to be on it now. No. No. They're using the forklift to put the bodies in the truck, not to get the people out of their house. Maybe they're going to up the weight. I'll have a ham. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Well, they can put them on a beach and bikini and, you know, put them in a Sports Illustrated swimsuit edition. That's what they're doing these days anyway. Fat is in, Steve. Yep. Dad bods. Dad bods are in. Dad bods are in. Look at this. Look at this specimen. We keep telling people that. Everybody will believe it. So. Yeah, no. And curves are in for women. They are in. Yep. I like a woman to feel like a woman. Like you. a my pillow. Yeah. Yeah. I want I want to, I want my women to woman. <laughs> to, <laughs> I like my all of my women to feel like they came out of a factory from Mike Lindell. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be right back with more shameful things. Don't move. is funny what you well, can't share it i can you look at dirty pictures no no well i mean that was earlier um <laughs> this is actually i had a video of dana lash speaking at our um mm-hmm. she's a member yeah. <clears throat> at texas gun experience anyway I had someone had as written, am i yes as is steve he just wrote still can't get a my head around the fact that you can go and shoot guns and i see on the news regularly that people are getting shot i guess it's something us brits will never understand mm. and so i was just chris lash dana's husband got involved he well, always some, does. well somebody else actually not chris but somebody said it's called the second amendment sucker <laughs> <laughs> and then he was like oh for somebody who calls me a sucker i don't think you're responsible enough to own a gun and then chris just piped in and and said People still get shot and murdered in England, France, and Spain. We will keep our freedom. You can keep your pretend safety. Look at Chris. And he said, you can keep your monarchy, too. We are citizens and you are a subject. And then the Brit said, really, you you are a group of citizens of a country that's run by an orange blob. Okay. Yeah. And then Chris said, check check the economy and freedom scoreboard. Also, we are a, a country that's run by the people. Say hello to the queen for us. You are dismissed, subject. <laughs> oh, my God. Anyway, uh, and, and the guy's still going, but yeah, sure I, it just made me giggle because I hadn't stop. read all of that. And They never stop, Natalie. They never stop. Everybody's got an opinion. Everybody's an expert. It's fun. Mm-hmm. It's fun to watch Candice. Well, and, and I will say that a lot of people that are not in the U.S. and people that are in the U.S. are allowing the media to sway and decide what their ultimate opinion is about our country. Yeah, I got another uh, thousand-word monologue dissertation uh, from someone who said, Chad, been watching this pandemic unfold from up here in Canada. All I could say is I hope things come about for the better soon. But man, you folks down there are your own worst enemies. Every one of your politicians, including Trump, is making a complete ass of themselves. They need to screw off with the egotistical pissing contest and get on the job with protecting the people. Hmm. It's Americans' lives they're responsible for. I said, I'll have a talk with them. (laughs) 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 That's what I responded with. I mean, what do you want me to do? I mean, people are just funny, man. I Look, I appreciate your concern. You know? And then I had another guy who was all about, why aren't you saying everything you need to say about Trump being the worst president ever for the Second Amendment? Well, it's true. I mean, we've talked about that. He's he's we've done more damage to the Second Amendment than any other president we've ever had. Uh, we've talked about that on numerous episodes. And I told him, I said, well, we're a humor show. We've discussed it numerous times. We tend to talk about the humorous side of current topics. Which episode? <laughs> I don't know. Pick one of the 220 we've done uh, in the last yeah. year and go find it, man. I um, can't remember what we said yesterday or the day before. You want something we talked about six months or a year ago? No idea. Right. <laughs> I like, don't know what we talked about yesterday. But you know what? Two days ago, you mentioned things that were that frustrated you about <laughs> frustrated me about Trump. About Trump. Yeah. It's and you said I am not a 100 percent 
diehard going to vote for President Trump right. like everyone else. Right. You, you say it all the time. I say it all the time because <clears throat> I, 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 that's my heart. It's, I'm honest about that. But if that guy's listening, the one topic, just so you know, the one topic that Chad brought up that comes to my mind, there have been several, is bump stocks. So if you're questioning whether or not, you know, Trump, he, you're on the bandwagon Trump. Go back and look for that because you mentioned several times yeah. it made you mad. Yeah, we had uh, Mark Maxwell, the owner. We've even had guests yeah. talking about that. it. My husband. We had guests talking about it. Yeah. yeah. So. Your brother-in-law. My brother-in-law. Husband. My husband. They've both talked the about that. The manufacturer that holds all patents for bump stocks has been on this show. RW That's Arms. Right. Yeah. So They're anyway. Like in the middle uh, of it. Here's the news you can use. Tiger King. Hmm. Uh, let's talk about Tiger King. Everybody's watching Tiger King. Who would have thought that a gay redneck, yeah, he's a redneck, uh, would bring us all together, uh, him and his zoo. Somebody sent me a message yesterday and said, when you talk to Joe, would you please ask him why he sold lube in his zoo? And I said, first of all, let's unpack your question. Okay. Same reason he sold uh, animal print thongs and... Condoms, um, condoms with his face, face on, on them. them. Yeah. And they said, but why at a zoo? And I said, well, let's talk about a zoo. <laughs> the zoo were the people who were working there. <laughs> the, the animals were just byproduct. <laughs> the zoo were the people who were working at the place, right? I don't know that I would call it a zoo more than a, just an exhibition, you know. Hey, come in and see the snake lady for one dime, one thin dime. Come on, give them a little peek, not too much. Wait for the show. Hey, I'm telling you, man, the dude's nothing more than a carnival barker, right? 223 tigers. <laughs> yeah. These are my two monkeys. They've been with me for 20 years. Uh, <laughs> I guess I got to set them free. Whew. And poor monkeys, you only got to y'all what about seen. Carol Baskin. <laughs> ah, Carol Baskin. Is... <laughs> Go follow my people at uh, Tiger King Memes. That's my favorite page right now. Oh, my God. This is the year of memes. But uh, we'll get to the news on this here in a second, because there is news. Uh, People either love it or hate it. There's no in-between. You Mm -hmm. don't just watch it casually. You either get involved or you don't watch it. It either sucks you in or you ignore it. Right. But there's no in-between with this show, with this series, right? Um, and, And you just know these producers are making bank. I mean, just mopping it up. Uh, but they're going the, the the sheriff is talking about reopening the case against Carol Baskin's disappeared vanished husband, 23 year old missing person. Knew it. Case. Uh Don Lewis mm-hmm. disappeared in 97. And the funny thing, Candace, is people watch this and, and part of me wants to feel Sorry for Carol Baskins because <laughs> because she has become just a villain to everyone. Mm-hmm. And it's like, here's a woman, hey, you cool cats and kittens, who's got a smile on her face. She's giggling about everything. I kind of like her husband, Howard. I feel for him. Uh, I feel like it's like you pull his string and he says what he has to say. But this girl has become public enemy number one. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I'm thinking, what did she do and say in this show where in the court of public opinion, everybody thinks she's guilty? Everybody. Everybody. They're blaming Carol for the coronavirus now. Oh, (laughs) they're saying that she is the source of it. So she's really taking a beating on this. I sat there last night at midnight laying in the bed reading those memes on Tiger King memes. And let me tell you, I've made some great ones, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. But there is some gold out there. There is some gold. One of them, is, is the character that you never think about is the guy that used to be the drug cartel member who hid the FBI agent's body. <laughs> and he's the most likable character. He was a cartel kingpin. He's the most likable character on the whole freaking show. <laughs> He's like the most boring guy. And it's and I love there's another meme where she's got him on the she's got Howard on the leash and he's squatted down in the little tiger outfit. It's just his watch on. And they said, this ain't even in the top ten of weird shit you're gonna see. 
That's true. <laughs> oh, it is true. Well, she is the ultimate cat lady. She yeah. she's cat she's cat queen. Like there is no other yeah. description of a cat lady than her. And there's some funny t-shirts out there. We came up with one that we put out and uh, but there's there's some funny stuff that people have made. I'm I'm kind of jealous that some people came up with these designs. Uh, we got to get us a good graphic designer. And and <laughs> I've no, got you one. No, up. you're not it. If you send me a message, you're not it. Um, <laughs> I got a message from somebody that I get messages every day. Okay, you're not it. Uh, I'm not being mean. I'm just saying that's not what we're looking for. I have a very specific thing that I'm looking for. You're not it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, we'll see what happens, man. I mean, that's what happened. Uh, uh, the making of what's the show? Making making a murderer. murderer. Making a murderer. Yeah, they opened up yeah. the case. Making a murder. And... I always want to say to catch a killer or to catch a predator. Yeah, I, I get I get them confused. I know they're two different things, but anyway, who knows what's <laughs> gonna happen out of this? Don <laughs> Lewis is probably living down there in Costa Rica his best life, but but I don't believe that because ninety percent of his money. 90% of his money, and if his sister would have just kept the will yeah. in her house, Carol Baskins yeah. would have never been able to buy a tiger. We'll be right back. Candace just sent me tonight's uh, graphic for the little thumbnail deal. We're talking about the fake news. And y'all pick the worst pictures. <laughs> Is that DC that picks these? Did you pick it? I pick it. I like it. That's a horrible camera. They're called action I mean, shots. Not, you don't have much to work with. That's, I mean. It's a thumbnail. I'm it's at, a little bitty picture. I'm at three chins now. Wait. I am like a China, I'm like a Corona Wuhan phone book. I got a whole list of chins. <laughs> <laughs> don't look at me like you're judging me. Your green eyes. Let me see. Go like this. There it is. <laughs> why? Why is your? Where'd your beard go? <laughs> I would say who you're look. You look like, but I'm not going to. Who? I can do that too. Who is? Who, Steve? Wait. Look. Who, uh, Steve? <laughs> Steve doesn't well, have self, a chin. I don't. And mine hangs down though. It's naturally. Get this from my mother. It's party time, Ma. Get that from my mom. It's genetic. Our double mm. chins. That and I'm fat. COVID-15. Now, let's mm -hmm. clear this up. Your mom does not have a beard. No, she doesn't have a beard. Did okay. you say what happened to my beard? Yeah. I shaved it. I know, but why? Every now and then, you got to plow the field. You know what I'm saying? You just got to <laughs> start over. over. But I'm asking about your beard. It's gone. Why'd you shave it? Just because every now and then you got to just start over. Okay. I don't like it because I look like a thumb with a cowboy hat. Are you going through something? You want to talk to us about it right now? Am I going to do what? Are you going through something? Is that why you got rid of the... No. No. Are you going through I, something? I did read for a movie part that, uh, you know, that happens every now and then. They send me these scripts. And so the guy that this part, it represents, this is a part about a real person. This is a biopic. And he's a little overweight in real life. So I was like, screw it. It works. Yeah. And so I shaved it down okay. to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Every now and then. LA, LA rules my life. You get a call What'd back? You, uh, what well, just happened? What yeah. happened, Candice? Okay, so what are you going to do if you get an email to audition for the Tiger King movie. They won't do that. But I would it's a love to. I, no, you know, after watching the other dude who who lived out there for however many months and collected all that stuff, and it just burned to the ground and killed my alligators and the crocodile. <clears throat> I just wouldn't. I couldn't be around that madness. I just couldn't be around that madness. Like trying to catch. Look, I've done reality stuff. I've I've done on the road, man on the street, TV, and things like that, and trying to set up scenarios, it becomes very stressful. Yeah. Very stressful. People don't realize how stressful. You guys know TV can be stressful. 
I mean, it really can. Because so many things can go wrong. There's so many moving parts, so many things that are happening at any given time. Now, you know, Mark, you take one of those Glenn Beck specials that he's doing on Wednesday night. There's a lot of moving parts to those sets and what's happening and the people who are working around that deal. And not even that is scaled down compared to a lot of things that are going on. Stressful. But then you add in the mix of people who don't know how to be on camera or who never have done that. And you're trying to get them to act natural with that camera on. Oh, that's hard. That is really, really hard. Mm -hmm. That is really hard. Thanks. Be now because there's something the that camera. really goes on in somebody when that camera comes on. They, they can be totally like wild personality crazy, but as soon as the camera comes on, they, they change. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So what'd you say, Steve? Now I'm aware of the camera. Yeah. <laughs> it's right there, man. Yeah. And it, and it doesn't hide anything. Nope. It definitely does add weight. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It definitely adds weight. Yes. I mean, about 26 pounds. <laughs> yeah. I think I'm wearing about four cameras right now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I, it's, um, you know, I don't know, man. I don't know. I'm going to be on 600-pound line. I'm looking at you right now on the monitor. Not me. Okay, yeah. You look good. Look straight. Look straight. <laughs> I mean, no, you look, look good. good. <laughs> no, look straight. Hey. You look good. Well, that's because you're partial, and well, you love me. I, I saw well, something. You're twenty percent better looking than you think you are. And that's that I, sounds I like know. something you'd come up with. You have Steve. body dysmorphia, oh, okay. or you're letting people in on in messages affect oh, I'll you. Oh, screw them. I don't care what they say. Okay, well, good. You look. Good. I had somebody on Monday Night Show who commented and said. Are you sick? You look like shit. <laughs> and I said, so do you. <laughs> ah, I wish people understood, Mark. I wish people understood that when I respond to you on social media, and I've always thought about maybe coming up with just certain answers, like just answer them with a Bible verse. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes just make it a total random Bible verse just so yep. they'll go look it up. And then I've thought about, uh, you know, just different little catchphrases to answer everything with that or something that just kind of marks you, just kind of puts the mark on you. You're like, you know, Cain and Abel when God sent him out into the wilderness and put his mark on him, like, you've got the mark. Well, <laughs> everybody knows. And, and, and I've thought about doing that, but people, I want them to understand that when I comment back to you, I'm not being serious with you. Yeah. Like, I'm not, I'm not mad at you. I'm not bitching at you. And I know sometimes through text, that's hard to pick up the emotion, right? Right, right, right. Uh, but I'm not, like, I will confront you or, or push back a little bit on, on a discussion, but I'm not mad at you. I, I'm not that shallow. I'm not that petty. You know what I'm saying? What, Steve? Uh, I was thinking of a, a Bible verse that addresses that exact what you're talking about. And it's uh, Tiger King 14.2. <laughs> I just start sending you things from the Song of Solomon. <laughs> you have a neck like the Tower of David, breasts like two doves. Yeah, I mean, they, Song yeah, of Songs, like pomegranates. That was a sexy wrestling. book. It's a sexy book. It's a sexy book. I did a symbolism teaching on that years ago. That mm -hmm. was, it was like, okay, let's get into it. Let's talk about what this. What uh, it means? Yeah, I want to dance in your gardens of myrrh. Speaking of dancing in the gardens of myrrh, drive-in mm -hmm. theaters, they've made a comeback amid the coronavirus. We've got a great one in Fort Worth, Coyote Drive-In. Uh, but the drive-in theaters, you can you can get in there and get jiggy with it in the back seat of your car if that's your thing, as long as you're doing it from six feet apart. They don't sure. make the back seats of cars like they did when we were... No, man. Uh, I was saying that the other day. I was watching... I was watching... What movie was it? It was... Uh, oh... Gosh, it was uh, the Elton John deal, the Rocket Man, and and they come out and get in the Rolls Royce. Yeah, you know the door that opens backwards. Yeah. And you just have like a living room in the back, and I'm like, how nice would that be? I'm living wrong. Can you see my redneck ass in a Rolls Royce, pimping? Steve driving. I was gonna say, as long as I get to drive, I can Steve see Steve in an Oilers hat. Houston Oilers hat, did driving the Rolls. Did y'all ever own the like 19 early 80s? luxury van 
No. Benny and the Jets. You know the vans that were yes, like. Yes, I had one. Bet on wheels. You did? Yeah. That doesn't surprise me. It was a conversion van, had a refrigerator, had a TV in yes. the front. Yes. Little mm-hmm. TV like this Car- and a VCR in the back. Carpet, like legit oh, yeah, carpet. carpet. It had mm-hmm. a little it had the little uh, bistro table right there. Mm. It was it was like the captain's table is what they called it. Okay. Back in the day. The captain's table. Do they make those vans anymore? I don't think they do. Not like okay. that. Now they make they, they make, make conversion vans. They make the conversion vans for like touring and stuff like that, Sprinters like RV with vans. bunk beds oh, okay. and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, I saw one yesterday. As a matter of fact, it was parked. It had like a twelve-inch lift on the top of it. And you could stand That's all the way up. Uh, AC's uh, conversion van. Yeah, it's like that big Sprinter. Aaron Copeland. Yeah, they. Um, I uh, yeah, a lot of musicians are doing. But yeah, I had the shagging wagon. Okay. You could fold it down, had the velour couch laid out into a bed. It, you couldn't stretch out on it. Is it called a shagging wagon because of the shag carpet? Nope, it's not. Oh. It's because if the vans are rocking, don't come a knocking. <laughs> it's a shagging wagon. Chicks dig it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that thing was a lemon, dude. It broke down all the time. Oh. All the time. It, there was problems with that thing. Sorry, honey. We're out of gas again. Yeah, that's the <laughs> I think we're stuck in the mud. We're on asphalt, you moron. You broke the shocks. Yeah. <laughs> I'm working on a song. I'm working on a new song, which, by the way, y'all need to get Quarantine Life. Uh, it'll be available. It should be available for downloads uh, tonight. We'll see. Uh, all the places that you can get songs. I'm writing a new song about um, the Motel 6 and a neon sign. Yeah. All the things that happen in a Motel 6 under a neon sign. Oh, it's a good song, Steve. I bet. It's a good song. It's a fun one. It's a fun one. I lived in Motel 6 for two weeks. Once. Did you? I used to live at the Old Hickory Inn, Jackson, Tennessee. $29 a night. $3 steak in the bar. And the bartender was easy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I'm telling you. It's like I said on Monday. 47 years of unprotected sex with women of loose morals, and I'm going to die from picking my nose. I know. Touching my face. <laughs> hey! The stuff you'll hear on the Chad Prather Show. I'm in a mood. I'm in a mood. We'll be right back. One of the uh, one of the fun one of the fun things that's going on this week is the mayor of Houston who came on uh, Monday on his press conference and he said everybody chill everybody chill talking to all the criminals he said y'all got to take a break right now <laughs> <laughs> he's right though y'all got to chill yeah y'all just need to cool it yeah let's stop all the criminalizing until this is over and take a break get... from the crimes take a break from the crime that is a good idea yeah i mean it works it's a good plan our buddy jack carr uh his new book savage son the third in the series of the james reese series great great stuff comes out on the 15th of april uh y'all be sure to get that we've had jack on the show he's going to come back on pretty soon uh we're going to work all that out but anyway Man, I'll tell you, go to watchchad.com. We are not out on the road, but uh, we're still doing things to entertain you. I got the private group on my on my Chad Prather page that you can join. Uh, it's not for everybody. It's for the strong at heart. Uh, we got all the links there at watchchad.com. You can go see them. And also, we got Cameo. I'll send you a Cameo. You can go to my, uh, download the app Cameo, look up Chad Prather. I've been having a blast. People asking me to say happy birthday and send messages because mm-hmm. they're all shut in, right? They can't get to each other. People send them from all around the world. And so they're asking me to do it's been a, It's been a blast, man. I'm just having a blast. COVID-19. Be careful. Stay at home, folks. Don't breathe on each other. I love you. God bless. We'll talk to you tomorrow night.